we are going to be letting V be the volume of the water that is in the tank. And we are talking about a rectangular tank. So let me just do a quick sketch of this rectangular tank. So this is the rectangular tank. According to what the question says, this rectangular tank has a base area of A. And water is going to be poured into the tank. So let's say this is the water that is in the tank. And the depth of this water is X. It is described to us here. The depth of the water that is in the tank is X, which means that the volume of the water that is in the tank, which is V, is going to be the base area multiplied by its depth. So it's going to be A times of X. And according to the question, water is flowing into the tank. It is flowing into the tank at a constant rate of N. So flowing into the tank at a constant rate of N. And water is also flowing out of the tank at a rate that is proportional. So it's going to be K times of proportional to what? Let's read the question. It is proportional to the square root of the depth of the water that is in the tank. So it's going to be square root of what is the depth of the water that is in the tank? It is X. So it's going to be K times of the square root of X which means that the rate of change of the volume of the water that is in a tank, which is going to be determined by the rate of input into the tank and rate of output from the tank, it is going to be n minus away k times of square root of x. And because we are defining input and output using our own sign plus and minus, so this k that we have introduced into our first differential equation here should be a positive number. So this is the differential equation that we have so far, but this is not what the question wants. The question wants a differential equation that is relating x and t. But what we have now, it is a differential equation relating v, t, and x. So what is v? v is a x. Let's replace v. So it's going to be d, d, t of v, which is going to be a x. This is equal to n minus k square root of x. a is a constant, so I can take it out here. It's going to be a of dx dt, this is going to be n minus k times of square root of x. k is something that we have introduced into the equation, and we should look at the question to see whether it is possible for us to solve for k. And in this case here, it is actually possible to solve for k. Where is the information that allows us to solve for k? According to the question, the depth of the water in the tank is when the depth of the water that is in the tank is h, the level of the water that is in the tank, which is actually x, remains constant. So there's not going to be any change in the, the depth of the water that is in the tank, which means that for this statement here, if I were to just rewrite it mathematically, when x is equal to h dx dt, this is equal to 0 because there's not going to be any change. The rate of change of x is 0. So I'm going to replace this by 0, which means that n minus k square root of x, which is now h, this is equal to 0, and this will help us to solve for k. k is going to be equal to n over square root of h. And now we can substitute this into here, into here. So a dx dt, this is equal to n minus k, which we now know that it is a over square root of h square root of x. This is pretty good. Okay, this is the differential equation that is relating x to t already. Um, but we can definitely do a little bit of changes also. So, okay, this is wrong. This is supposed to be n. So let's maybe just divide a across to the other side. So we have a dx dt here. This is going to be equal to n over a minus away n over a times of square root of h. And we have a square root of x here. We're given that x is equal to h u square, and we are supposed to make use of this to substitute and replace all the x that is given here, such that it will give us a new differential equation that looks like this. So this x is going to be replaced by h u square. Let's find a way to replace the x dt. To do that, let's re let's differentiate. Let's differentiate this with respect to t. So on the left hand side, we will have a dx dt. And on the right-hand side, we will then get a representation of what dx dt is, which we are going to be substituting it back into here, okay? So h here, let's make sure that we recognize that h here is a constant. Why is it a constant? Because of the way that it is being described to me by the question in this statement here. The water is going to become, the level of the water is going to become h. So it is going to become a constant value, and the level of water is going to remain at this value, dx dt is going to be equal to zero. That's what this question here says. So h here is a constant. So constant, when I differentiate it, it's not going to be affected. I will just be differentiating u square. And this is going to be 2u du dt when I differentiate it with respect to t. So this will give me a representation for dx dt. It is going to be 2hu dx dt. So I'm going to be replacing this by 2hu 
dx dt is equal to n over a minus n over a square root of h multiplied by square root of x and square root of x, x is h u square. So it is going to be 2 h u dx dt is equal to n over a minus n over a square root of h and square root of h here is are going to be cancelled so it will disappear and i'm going to be left with this square root of u square and i have a bit of problem managing this square root of u square because at this point when i'm video when i'm filming this video i am unable to determine whether u is a positive number or not at least i am unable to do that based on the information that is given to me by the question so if I were to leave it as it is, like as in like if I were to not be able to determine whether u is positive or negative, then this will become modulus of u, which will make it pretty difficult for me to continue. So I guess I'm going to just make an assumption here. I'm going to assume that u is a positive number. Okay, so 2hu dx dt is equal to n over a minus away n over a of square root of u square. I'm going to let it be u. And again, I just want to make sure that you understand this is not usual. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I am unable to determine based on the information that is given to me by the question whether u is positive or negative. So, in, But instead of writing with a modulus of u, which will make it very difficult for me to continue, I'm assuming u to be a number that is bigger than zero. So I'm choosing the positive one. So now I have this, and with a 2hu dx dt, and if I were to factorize out negative n over a, it will actually give me a u minus 1, which is nice, because here we have a u minus 1. And if I were to divide u across, and this n over a, and I'm dividing it across to the other side, then we will get a 2ah over n of dx dt because i'm dividing this n over a over to the other side and u i'm dividing across to the right hand side which will then give me a u minus one divided by u and this is actually what i'm supposed to be showing now we are going to try solve this differential equation and since this differential equation is already in a variable separable format we are going to stick to the process that we have discussed in our topical outline on achievers tv so this i'm going to bring it over to the left hand side which will give us a u over u minus one multiply by du dt is equal to the negative is still here this is a constant which i'm going to divide across to the other side which will give us a n over 2 a h so for this that is here, we are going to integrate both the left and the right hand side with respect to t. So on the left hand side, we will have an integration of u over u minus 1 and it's going to be reduced to integration of this with respect to u is equal to negative n over 2ah, which is a constant. So it's going to fall outside the integration notation, integrating 1 with respect to t. On the left hand side, we're going to do a bit of manipulation to it so that we can do an integration. And we can either do a long division or we can do a simple manipulation that is like this, u minus 1 plus 1 divided by u minus 1 du. This is negative of n over 2ah integration of 1 dt. So this will now become a 1 plus 1 over u minus 1 du is equal to negative n over 2ah integration of 1 dt and now on the left hand side here is going to be integrated to be u plus ln of modulus of u minus 1 is equal to negative n over 2ah of t plus an arbitrary constant b so now to solve for b we can either try to replace and substitute u with x, which can have a little bit of a um, problem. Not exactly problem, but it's sort of like complicated things. Let me explain to you why it's sort of like complicated things, because x is equal to h u square, which means that u square is going to be equal to x over h. This tells us that u is going to be equal to plus or minus, but because previously we have assumed that u is positive, so it is going to be positive square root of x over h. So this square root thing is sort of like going to make my entire solution here look so, sort of like complicated. And I don't want to avoid such com complexity in my solution. So what we can probably try to do is to stick with u. Okay, this is not the normal way of doing things. But since this question actually didn't ask us to solve 
to get an equation that is in terms of x and t. So I'm going to stick with u and I'm going to show you why this is actually easier to calculate for. So I'm going to make use of an, a piece of information that is given to us by the question to solve for b and that piece of information is here. It says that initially, so we are talking about when time is equal to zero. So I'm, let me write it down. When t is equal to zero initially, initially the depth of the water is 4h. So initially x is equal to for h. And what is x? x is h u square. So h u square, this is equal to 4 h. This tells us that u square here is equal to 4, which means that u is going to be equal to square root of 4, and that is going to be equal to 2. And since we have already assumed that u is a positive number, so we can strike out negative 2. So u is going to be equal to 2. Now we can substitute this back in here to solve for b, which means that u, which is going to be 2, let me write it down, 2 plus ln modulus of 2 minus 1. This is minus n over 2ah multiplied by t, which is 0 plus b. This straight away gives us the value of b as 2. Why? Because uh, this is 2 and this is going to be ln 1. Ln 1 is 0 and this is just 0. So b is equal to 2. So our equation will now be u plus ln modulus of u minus 1 is equal to negative n over 2ahT plus b, which is equal to 2. And now we are ready to find the time when x is equal to 16 overnight. I'm going to go through the same process. So when x is equal to 16 over 9. So let me write it down here, 16 over 9 h. So when x is equal to 16 over 9 h, that means h u square, okay? x is h u square. So h u square is going to be equal to this 16 over 9 h. This tells us that u square is equal to 16 over 9. This tells us that u is going to be square root of 16 over 9 and that is 4 over 3. Which means that when x is equal to 16 over h, u is equal to 4 over 3. And we are supposed to find the value of t when u is equal to 4 over 3. So we will now replace this u here by 4 over 3. So we have a 4 over 3 plus ln of modulus of 4 over 3 minus 1. This is minus n over 2ah of t, which we are supposed to find, plus 2. So bringing this over to the left-hand side, we have uh, n over 2ah of t. This is equal to 2 minus away 4 over 3. 2 minus away 4 over 3 gives us a 2 over 3. Minus away ln of 4 over 3 minus 1 is going to be 1 over 3, so 1 over 3. 1 over 3 can also be written as as 3 to the power of minus 1. So if I were to bring the minus 1 over to the front, we will be having a 2 over 3 plus ln of 3. So now here we can get t. t is going to be equal to, multiplying this across to the other side, we will have a 2ah over n multiplied by 2 over 3 plus n plus ln 3. So this is t when x is equal to 16 over 9h. And finally, we are supposed to describe how x varies with respect to t. I think we can just give a very general description. So what I'm going to say is that when t increases, x is going to, incre x is going to decrease. And x will decrease from 4h, which is given to us by the question initially. So it's going to decrease from 4h and it's going to level at h. So x is going to decrease from 4h to h. And then after that, you will remain at h. Mm -hmm. 